So in this video, we'll be going over the problem where a person is holding a milk carton away from their body. And so we have a two kilogram milk carton at arm's length. Find the force exerted by the bicep muscle in the upward direction. And we're also asked to find the force of the elbow joint, the magnitude and the direction. So the elbow joint's gonna be our pivot point that's located right here. And then we have the force of the bicep, that's one force. We're gonna have the force of the elbow joint, which is what we're gonna be solving for. That's two forces. The forearm has a mass, so it's going to have a weight force downwards. So that's the weight of the forearm. And then we're also going to have the weight due to the milk carton. So we have four forces. Do we have, how many torques do we have? So why don't we take a look at each force and see if it has a tendency to produce a torque. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at what is our pivot point. So our pivot point, again, is this elbow joint right here. So looking at the force from the bicep, is that going to tend to cause a rotation of the arm about this pivot point? And the answer is yes. It's going to want to rotate the arm this way. So that will produce a torque. Can you produce a torque when the force is acting at the pivot point? And the answer to that is no. Because if you recall, the expression for a torque is the force times the distance from the pivot point times the sine of the angle between those two vectors. So if your distance, when you're located or having a force acting at the pivot point, the distance is zero, so the torque is zero. You have experience with this, and if you've ever tried to open a door at a hinge point, so if you go to the hinge and you try to push on the door, it's not gonna open because it's rotating about that point. And then looking at these two weight forces, they're acting away from the pivot point, so they're going to wanna to cause a rotation in that direction about the elbow joint. So both of those are going to cause torques. So we're gonna have three torques, and we have four forces acting. So let's go through what our problem solving steps are, and then we'll go ahead and implement them. So the first thing in all, all problems is to define your coordinate system, choosing a positive X and Y direction in this case, and then a positive axis rotation. And that's going to typically be positive in the counterclockwise rotation. So that's plus Y and that's plus X. So the next thing to do is to draw a simplified diagram labeling the forces and the distances. Um, we've already kind of done that here, uh, but you will just have a more simplified where you have a line to the pivot point, draw your forces and draw your distances, and then label any angles if they're off the horizontal axis. The next step is to, well, we kind of combine steps two and three right there. For four, you draw a free body diagram for the system. So this isn't a free body diagram. This is kind of giving you an idea of um, where all your forces are acting and what direction your torques are gonna be in. The next step is to draw a free body diagram for your system, much like we did in module four and module five. And that's going to be, you know, your, your arm system is going to be the point and we're going to have four forces acting because we have an elbow force, a force from the bicep and the two weight forces. Next step is problem two of the solve, uh, problem solving framework or part two of the problem solving framework where you sum all of the torques to zero. Remember torque is a vector, so there's a direction associated with torques. And then you sum all of the forces 
equal to zero as well. And again, that's a vector quantity too. We have a force acting that's at an angle in this case, so all the forces will not be in either the horizontal or vertical directions. So we're going to need to split our forces up into components. So we're gonna to have to sum the forces in the X direction, sum the forces in the Y direction, much like we know how to do already. And then the next steps are basically implementing our plan. You know, we're summing everything, we're solving for the force by the bicep, and then the magnitude and direction of the force by the elbow. So implementing our steps, we, uh, we start by drawing a simplified diagram labeling all the forces and distances. And so that's what I have here. We have our pivot point, piece of E for elbow, over here on the far right side. We have the weight of the milk carton all the way at the left. We have the weight of the forearm, where its center of mass is, located 15 centimeters to the left of the pivot point. We have the force of the bicep that is acting 75 degrees from the vertical. And so that's gonna be a key point here in a second. And then we have the force of the elbow. And so that direction's pointed down and to the left. That may not be obvious um, just from this diagram, but once we draw the free body diagram, that becomes quite clear if we're in equilibrium, what direction that needs to be. You can already tell that because we have a force from the bicep that's up and to the right, and we have two weight forces that are directly downward. So we're going to have to have something to the left to balance out the forces in the X direction, and then downwards because the force of the bicep is much larger than the two weight forces combined. We labeled our distances that are given and now we can determine what the sign of the torques will be for the forces that produce torques. So starting with the weight of the milk, that's going to want to cause a rotation this way about the elbow and that's in the counterclockwise direction so that's going to be a positive torque same reasoning for the weight of the forearm and then the force of the bicep is going to want to cause a rotation its torque is going to want to cause a rotation that's in the opposite direction so that's going to be a negative torque so now this saves us time down below when we sum the torques because now we already know the signs. Now we can draw a free body diagram for our arm system. We have four forces, remember? So let's start with the weight forces. Those are the easiest ones to define. We have the weight of the milk, and then we have the weight of the forearm, and both of those are in the downwards direction. Now, the other one we know is the force of the bicep, FB, and we can break it up into its components, X component, Y component, so that's FBX, FBX, and FBY. And what's this angle above the horizontal? Well, if from the vertical at 75 degrees, remember that a triangle, or remember that from the vertical to the horizontal is 90 degrees. So it's 90 minus 75, which is 15 degrees. And now the remaining force, the force of the elbow, to balance out, because we know that all the forces have to sum to zero, we must have an equal and opposite force component in the X direction. And so their X components are going to be equal 
And then we have forces acting in the negative y direction. So the y component of the bicep force is not going to be equal to the y component of the elbow force. So that's going to be, we'll just draw that smaller. And now we have a direction for the force of the elbow. We don't know what these components are because we're solving for them, but this gives us the directions that we should expect. And so everything's done here. Now we can, we can move forward. So again, in equilibrium, we sum the torques to zero. The forces need to be summed in both the x and y direction to zero since we have components in both the x and y direction. And now coming down here and looking at our expression for torque, we need to determine what the angle is between our force vector and our distance vector. So for the weight forces, those two are at 90 degrees to each other because our distances are measured along the horizontal. Our forces are entirely in the vertical, so the angle between them is 90. Now for the force of the bicep, we have a horizontal distance given, which is 8 centimeters. And we have a force by the bicep that's being applied 15 degrees above the horizontal. So that angle is going to be 15 degrees in the expression for torque. Starting off by summing the torques to zero, we have the two weight forces that produce a positive torque and then the force of the bicep produces a negative torque. Keeping in mind that the torque from the bicep is not going to be at an angle that causes the sine of the angle to be one because it's 15 degrees and not 90 degrees. Solving for the force of the bicep, you find that the force of the bicep is 490 newtons. Now to be able to solve for the force of the elbow, we need to sum the forces in both the x and y directions. In the x direction, we only have the component from the bicep and then the component of the force of the elbow, which is what we're looking for. Solving for that, we find the component of the elbow in the x direction. And then we sum the forces in the y direction, do the same thing, but now we have to take into account the weight forces as well. Summing all those together and solving for the y component of the force of the elbow, find that that's equal to 82.7 newtons. So now that we have both components, we can draw our triangle. We can fill that out from our free body diagram. Remember we have a horizontal that's going to balance out the force from the, the X component of the force from the bicep. And then we have this Y component pointing downwards. And then we have the force of the elbow here. So we just need to use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the force of the elbow. So we have the force of the elbow in the x direction squared plus the force of the elbow in the y direction squared. Take the square root. So this is the f component or the y component of the elbow, x component of the elbow. So using Pythagorean theorem, we find that the force of the elbow is equal to 480 newtons. Now to get the angle, so the angle is going to be measured from the horizontal. And so what you want to do is we solve for these components. So we want to use those components. We'll use the inverse of tangent, which is going to be opposite over adjacent. So the force y component of the elbow force over the x component of the elbow force. Substituting everything in and solving, we find that that's an angle of 9.91 degrees. So the force of the elbow is 480 newtons, 9.91 degrees below the horizontal. 